Hello, everyone, and welcome to another mystery object answer video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier, and yesterday I showed you this object, which I said was a medical instrument used for probing a particularly sensitive part of the human body. Hopefully, most of you guessed that that body part was the eyeball. This is a Schutztonometer, which is used for measuring intraocular pressure, or IOP, the pressure inside the eyeball. And IOP is a key measurement in the diagnosis of glaucoma, a condition in which the aqueous humor inside the eye fails to drain properly, leading to an increase in pressure and potentially damage to the optic nerve and vision loss. Now, the measurement of IOP is called tonometry, and there are a number of different methods, though most of them are based on the principle of applanation, that is measuring the amount of force it takes to flatten a certain section of the cornea which can then be related to IOP via the invert fit law, which essentially states that the IOP is equivalent to the force needed to flatten that section of the cornea divided by the area over which that force is applied. However, this assumes that the corneal membrane is infinitely thin and flexible, which it isn't, and that most people have a corneal membrane of identical thickness, which they don't. So, typically an empirical set of conversion tables is used to convert between the applanation results and actual IOP in millimeters of mercury. Now, interestingly, doctors were originally trained to estimate IOP by pressing on their patient's eyeballs through the closed eyelid. Though starting in the mid-19th century, various mechanical instruments or tonometers were developed for this purpose, including the Schütz tonometer, which was introduced in 1905 by Norwegian ophthalmologist Janma Schütz. And I apologize to any Norwegian viewers for completely butchering his name. Anyway, let's actually have a closer look at this and see how it works. So the Schütz tonometer consists of four basic parts. We have a curved foot plate, which sits directly on the eyeball. We have a telescoping plunger, which is actually what makes the indentation in the cornea. That is connected to this needle and indicator system, which indicates the force needed to flatten the cornea. Then there's also this set of handles, which slide along the axis of the instrument, which prevents the user from applying any extra force to the eyeball and affecting the readings. So to use this instrument, the first step would be to lie your patient on their back and anesthetize their eyes. Now, originally this was done using cocaine, though today ophthalmologists will use a number of related alkaloids, including holocaine or proxy medicaine. And I can actually personally attest that these anesthetics are very effective because I actually once underwent applanation tonometry, though not with one of these, but with a more modern digital instrument. And the ophthalmologist actually didn't tell me what he was doing. He just gave me some eye drops and appeared to be examining the interior of my eye with some sort of instrument wasn't until after he was done that he revealed that he was actually pushing directly on my eyeball with said instrument, and I didn't feel a thing. It was a very odd experience. So the second step is to calibrate the instrument, which you do by placing the foot plate on this little curved calibration block. And when you do so, the dial should read zero. And if it doesn't, then the mechanism needs to be adjusted. You then hold the instrument by the sliding handle and lower the foot plate onto the eye, allowing the plunger to indent a section of the cornea, and you can read the force required off of the scale. You then use conversion tables to convert that applanation reading into IOP in millimeters of mercury. And according to the instruction manual that came with this particular unit, regular IOP is around 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury, though today we know that a lot of people have much higher IOPs without suffering any ill effects. Now, for particularly high IOPs, you'll need more weight in order to applanate the cornea. Now, this unit already comes with a 5.6 gram weight installed as standard, but to add more, you can add this 7.5 and 10 gram weight to the plunger as so. Now, the Schutz tonometer remained the gold standard for applanation tonometry until the 1950s, when it was replaced by the Goldman tonometer developed by Austrian-Swiss ophthalmologist Hans Goldman. This comprises a cone-shaped probe containing a split image prism, which is attached to a slit lamp and placed against the patient's anesthetized eye. A fluorescent dye called fluorescine is also placed in the patient's eye, and a filtered cobalt blue light passed from the slit lamp through the prism. 
The ophthalmologist then progressively presses the probe into the patient's eye until the two fluorescent semicircles in the split prism line up, indicating that the cornea has been flattened. There is also a handheld version of this device called the Perkins tonometer, as well as other models that use piezoelectric pressure sensors rather than light and prisms to determine IOP. But the form of tonometry that most of you are probably familiar with, if you go to the optometrist, the ophthalmologist regularly, is non-contact or air puff tonometry, in which a burst of air is fired into the eye and various optical sensors used to determine the pressure at which the cornea is flattened. Now, air puff tonometry is less accurate than other methods, but is still a more convenient, quick, and less invasive means of pre-screening. And typically, if your preliminary results are a little bit higher than normal, then an ophthalmologist will follow up with a more invasive but accurate tonometry method. And that, dear viewers, is a brief overview of the obscure but very important field of tonometry. I hope you enjoyed the video and managed to guess the use of this instrument correctly. I'll see you next time in another mystery object or regular video where we'll look at yet more medical instruments and other fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.